My name is Jesse Levinson. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Zoox. I feel like I've probably always been interested in technology, at least from the time I knew what it was. I was fortunate to have two parents who really loved playing with cool science and technology things. Um, my dad and my mom both had a few computers in the house with the original modems when I was really, really young, like 300 baud modems, 1200 baud modems uh, with all the sounds they made. And I just thought it was cool since my parents were playing with it, it must be worth playing with. So ever since I was, you know, three, four, five, six, I've been learning how to do things on computers and uh, kind of took it from there. When we started Zoox, we really wanted to change the way people moved around cities. And in our view, that meant doing something more than just retrofitting conventional cars to be self-driving. In our view, that meant creating a new type of vehicle that was really designed and optimized for riders and not drivers, because we didn't need drivers anymore. But it also meant changing the business model. Instead of selling everybody their own car, and in the US, we have more than two cars per family which is really wasteful economically and environmentally. What we realized is that if we had autonomous electric people movers, then instead of selling them to customers, we could provide rides all day and all night long. So each one of our vehicles would be profoundly more useful and efficient throughout a 24 hour cycle than somebody's personal car, which spends 96% of its time taking up space and depreciating. Because we have the opportunity at Zoox to create a new type of vehicle that also allows us to really innovate on the hardware, the software, the integration of the hardware and the software, and the service. So it's things like how we create our sensor pods that perceive the world around us, where we're able to put those on the vehicle, how we build in redundancy and safety features into the vehicle platform itself, and then how we take advantage of those features from an AI perspective like with four-wheel steering and bi-directionality, we can control our vehicle much more precisely than any regular car, even a self-driving car. And then we can innovate on the customer experience. We can create an interior experience that's really unlike anything people have experienced in a regular car. It's a much nicer interior cabin. We've significantly shortened the vehicle, but we've also added way more interior space because we don't need all those conventional controls like steering wheels and pedals and forward facing seats for all four occupants. The vision for Zoox is pretty compelling. I don't think we have to spend too long getting people excited about, you know, moving folks around cities on demand. But people do sometimes wonder, you know, is this really possible? Or if it is possible, why hasn't it happened yet? What is the technological gap that's preventing this technology from existing today or at least being widespread? Uh, and there are many facets to that answer, but the common thread is that, you know, what we're doing does build on a lot of technological progress that's happening around the industry. So for example, the computing power is just profoundly more impressive today than it was a decade ago. And actually every couple of years, we're able to pack more and more computation in a smaller amount of space at a lower cost and with less power required. That really enables us to put more sophisticated and complicated algorithms on the vehicle. And similarly, a lot of the progress that's being made in academia and industry on AI and machine learning models and the ability to train on large amounts of data, that is really helping to enable the performance that we need to solve safe autonomous driving. And then if we want to answer how safe is our system, which is really important because we can't just build something that has functionality we need to build something that has functionality and incredible safety. To measure that safety, we also need innovations in data science and statistical reasoning and tying that into the safety fields and the AI fields and even looking at the hardware and the vehicle integrity, putting that all together, that also requires innovation. And we've been able to build on a lot of the great work that's happening again in academia and in various industries. We look at automotive, we look at healthcare, we look at aerospace, we look at aviation, we take the best of all of that and then we try to use that here at Zooks. One of the nice things about what we're building is it doesn't really require a lot of changes from infrastructure or from the way cities operate today. Sometimes people ask us, well, wouldn't it be easier 
to deploy your technology if you had, let's say, you know, autonomous only lanes or autonomous only blocks or autonomous only cities? Um, and the answer is to some degree, yes, but also those things don't exist and we don't want to wait for them to exist. We'd much rather build a technological solution that seamlessly integrates with cities as they are today. Because if we go to a city, you know, whether we're going to a, a municipal government, state government, federal government, we're asking for a bunch of changes with money that they don't have, we're going to be waiting arbitrarily long, possibly forever. So what we've done at Zook is we've challenged ourselves to build a product that really integrates into the, the world the way it is today. So we don't really ask anything specifically of cities. Uh, we don't ask anything specifically of other pedestrians, other bicyclists. It's not fair to tell bicyclists to bike differently. It's not fair to tell pedestrians to walk differently. And it's not fair to tell other drivers to drive differently. We have to build a safe system. And we know that's possible because human drivers today interact in that construct and, you know, for the most part, do pretty well. We know we can do better because we're alert. We're never getting distracted. We're seeing 360 degrees around the vehicle many, many times every second. So we can do better. And over time, yes, there will be new technology. Cities will innovate. Maybe there'll be autonomous only zones. Um, that's great, but we're not waiting for that. So if you look at the last hundred and some years of uh, technological innovation in transportation, there's been just absolutely exciting progress, uh, not only for people's mobility, but also for people's safety. Uh, and that's great, but the benefits of that progress have not always been shared equally across all parts of society. Now, to some degree, that's inevitable. Any new technology you know, takes its time to make its way to everybody, um, but there have been some kind of disappointing drawbacks of the progress we've seen over the last hundred years, and people don't always fully appreciate that. Lots of folks don't have access to safe transportation, um, and it may be because there are places where not everybody can afford their own personally owned vehicle. And then trying to use uh, public transportation, that's great in some ways, but it also doesn't take you exactly where you want to go. And, you know, certainly not everybody can afford to use taxis or Ubers and Lyfts. You're basically having to pay somebody else to drive you around. And also, um, unfortunately, a lot of Uber and Lyft and taxi drivers don't even want to go to certain parts of towns where arguably people need that type of uh, access more than anywhere else. So no one company is going to solve all that and, and nobody should claim to be able to. But what we're really excited about with this technology is that it is going to really reduce the barriers to people being able to access safe and affordable transportation. Fundamentally, what we're building is safer and fundamentally what we're building is more affordable because from a vehicle utilization perspective, one vehicle can service riders all day and all night long. So the marginal cost of a vehicle per ride is much better. And then compared to using ride hailing, instead of having to pay somebody else to drive you around, well, you're really only paying for the, the vehicle's time. What that means is that more and more people, especially from underserved communities, will actually be able to afford using this type of transportation. What we're doing is definitely a real challenge. Uh, we're trying to innovate in many different sectors and kind of bring that all together in one product. Many of the individual challenges we're solving are plenty difficult on their own. And on top of that, we have to figure out how to integrate that all into one product and do that in a really safe way. Uh, it's certainly possible. We're doing it. We're putting points on the board. We have so many metrics and so many proof points along the way. You know, we can say, look, well, we're now testing our vehicle on open roads with nobody in it. And we're doing that with a quantitative safety case that shows we're actually safer than humans. We can show that we're driving our full AI stack on our level three test fleet in some of the hardest cities like San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Seattle. And we can see that we're actually making fewer mistakes in those cities than even good human drivers make. So we're seeing these proof points and we can measure our progress. And that's really encouraging because it means that even though it's really hard, even though we've been doing this for a long time, we don't have to wonder whether we're on kind of the right track or the wrong track. So we really sort of have a deep respect and admiration for how challenging what we're doing is. It's not for everybody. Uh, there are definitely people who want to work on easier problems and that's totally understandable. Uh, but for the folks who are excited by something this different and this hard and who see the benefits it will have to society and how proud they'll feel when they can say, hey, I was part of that. This is a pretty cool place to be.